Okay, we're getting right to work this morning. Um, this is problem number one from the assignments. Um, I'll do it in detail. As I said, I'll do all the problems in detail. Uh, let's get started here. As we've said so many times, this is a compound shape. So it's the, um, it's the cone plus the cylinder. They fit to make a compound shape because they share the same diameter. If D is 12, then R is 6. You're supposed to know that. There's really no excuse for not being able to do a simple problem like this. All right, so let's uh, work the math out now. Um, if the whole thing, the height of the whole thing is 18, then the height of the uh, cylinder is 9, the height of the cone here is 9, and the radius is 6 that they share. R equals 6. R equals six. Notice I'm doing it different ways because I'm getting tired of doing the same problems, but maybe it helps some of the kids who are trying to figure all this stuff out. And uh, let's just get it a little bit more adjusted here. Okay, and uh, so now we just fill in the numbers. So the compound will be, uh, the compound volume will be one third uh, pi. Uh, 6 times 6, that means 6 squared, times 9, uh, plus um, pi, um, and again it's 6 times 6, which is the radius, times 9. Okay? So you don't really have to be um, uh, very good in math to see what's going on there. And again, as we've always done, just to make the math a little bit easier, I'll uh, get rid of the denominator. I always want to do that if I can. And there we go. Um, 6 times 6 times 3 is 108 pi. That's been explained to you. And then 6 times 6 times 9 is, um, let's see, 6 times 6 times 9. Why is that? Uh, that would be, uh, looks like there's a mistake here. Uh, 6 times 6 times 9 is uh, 324 pi. And when you add up 108 plus 324, because they're like terms, you end up here with um, a 432 pi. And that's the correct answer. Okay, that's been vetted. And can you see it here? Yes, you can. All right, so that takes care of the first one. Uh, cubic, it's important to keep that in the back of your heads. Units, okay? And uh, here we go with this typical circumference problem. Uh, since uh, 2 pi r equals c, you're supposed to know that. You're responsible for learning that kind of stuff. So it follows that 2 pi r equals 150 centimeters, okay, that's a linear um, thing. We divide both sides by 2 pi. Maybe to make the calculator work uh, easier, um, r is going to equal uh, 75 divided by pi. You should be able to do that. Now we put everything together and you get v equals uh, pi. 75 divided by pi squared. No big deal if you left it 150 over pi. Just bigger numbers. The bigger the numbers, the more complicated the math. And of course, the height is this. And when I put this in the calculator, uh, I came up with no reason to waste your time doing that one. I came up with 44,762.33 uh, cubic centimeters. Probably be worth turning into um, uh, meters there, but you were asked to do this kind of question you get on your test. I don't like big numbers just like you don't either. So we quickly move on. Okay, and again, uh, I've gotten calls, uh, I mean, you know, correspondence that says you can't do these. I don't see why. You should be able to do these problems. Eighth graders over the years have done them. It's a real pity that uh, you have to learn this way, but um, that's the deal. That's the deal for eighth graders in today's world, okay? And we've never had 
over the years in the general ed class uh, any serious problems uh, for kids doing these problems, especially with a calculator. Without a calculator, of course, um, it would be different. But number one, notice you don't even want to use a calculator and just want to add up the numbers. I guess you want to use one. There's the ice cream cone problem as a, as a, as a review. And I even took the time to tell you the top was a half sphere. So all we have to do is add the half sphere plus the cone. It's compound. They both fit together just like a real ice cream cone would. And now we go to the left hand side, uh, to the right hand side over here. And we write out our numbers. And we have two thirds. How did I get two thirds for the upteenth time? Two thirds is half of four thirds. That's the formula for a sphere. That's the math you're asked to do in eighth grade. So it's uh, r cubed. So since the radius over here you were given, uh, the diameter was 18. So the radius is 9, and then you were given the height as 12. So again, big numbers shouldn't make that much of a difference to your average eighth grader. So since there's no height, you're supposed to know that in, um, in the math course that you're taking. Uh, plus, since it's compound, now there's the formula for the uh, cone, which you should be very familiar with if you've been doing your work. They share the radius. So there's 9 squared, I'm writing 9 times 9, and finally um, 12, which was assigned the height of the cone. There it is, compound figure, putting everything together like that. Again, we'll simplify, and then if you like, you can just use your calculator, and when you go left to right, you're going to get 406 pi. That's what happens when I multiply all the numbers together, plus 324 pi. You can do it yourself and check me. And finally, we come up with 730 pi. Okay? And that, of course, would be cubic units. And I guess you could use it, because you can use calculator anytime you want. You could just um, uh, use a calculator, maybe once you simplify and just multiply it out so you wouldn't make any... Uh, simple mistakes uh, doing the math. And now next for problem number four, I received a couple of emails saying they've forgotten how to do it. This is just a subtraction problem. Expect that on the Common Core. This doesn't go to the bottom. So they're giving you two heights. They'll do that on the test. And the height of the cylinder is 10. And they're telling you the height of the cone is 5. So they're basically uh, giving it away for you here, and of course they share uh, a radius, and the radius is 3. Okay, so now this time it's the cylinder minus the cone, and you care, as I mentioned, about the shaded volume in here. So you're supposed to be able to do that in 8th grade. Kids have been doing it for years and years. I plug in the number, and I get, uh, let's just make sure, since we're just doing this in detail for the kids who are saying they're not getting this, there's uh, 3 uh, times 3 times 10. I'm just breaking the numbers down to make it even easier. And then over here, since it's a cone, remember you're minusing, so don't forget to do that. Of course, it just makes sense if you look at the problem. And um, that, of course, is pi. And uh, that is uh, 3 times 3, and the height is 5. It's a good idea to cancel the 3s here. And then when you put in the numbers, uh, I came up with, um, let's see, 3 times 3 times 10 is 90 pi minus 15 pi. And you should have easily been able to come up with 75 pi cubic units. Okay? So... That takes care of the first four. Now we'll turn our attention to the last one. Uh, we just found the back of the sheet here. I'll erase and uh, give myself a little room to do this math. How are we doing? We're doing great time-wise. Uh, send me correspondence. Send me an email.
Uh, if you want more problems precisely like this, I gave you slightly more difficult problems. I won't say difficult. I'll say uh, problems that I was explaining yesterday, because I want to get right after those. I'm really keen on the problems that you'll get on your test. So um, I do definitely want to give you uh, practice doing those and solve them uh, as we go along. So here we are with plenty of time to do the last problem without making another video. Um, and we see that uh, number five is saying that we have some sort of cylinder-like object here. And again, it's a right cylinder. Why is it a right cylinder? Because if you drew a diameter here, it makes a right angle. And I told you, you could slant it and have an ellipse. It's important to talk about that. I plan to do problems uh, like that. And they give you the volume. Not shocking, right? And it's 1020 centimeters cubed. Again, it's the whole point of the course that we begin to understand these ideas. And the height is um, 20 centimeters. And of course, what's left that you don't know, you're required to find the uh, radius. Okay? So I'll do that problem over here. Uh, hopefully you've seen it properly. Yes, it looks like it's good. So here we go. You write what you know. There's the volume. There's your pi. You can't forget that in these problems. And uh, there's your r squared. And then your h, which of course you know, uh, given is 20. So I divide by 20, I divide by pi. What you do on one side, you do on the other. Since it's a calculator problem, I really don't waste my time uh, reducing. I take um, the square root, put the hat on everybody, and there's your radius. So um, to me, these problems aren't particularly interesting. It's just a matter of plugging in the right buttons. So I'll do that. You press yellow, square root. And when you do that, this problem will turn out. And the, the number that I got to 100 is 4.03 linear. I keep stressing this, centimeters, because you all be taking science courses. And this sort of lends itself to that. Centimeters is, is the radius. Some kids say, how do I check? Just plug this in, square it. And while I had to, um, I had to uh, round here, you'd lose a tiny little bit, but you'd be very close to 10, 20. So that concludes what we were doing with these five problems. Um, later this afternoon, I'm going to make a video continuing. I told you there'd be some painting problems. Uh, I gave you a problem with surface area today, and I'll probably do one, elaborate that to show you what you want to do. So you're responsible for surface area, lateral surface area, okay? And uh, you're responsible, for when I do the painting problems, for knowing which surfaces you don't count. Because after all, if you paint an object, you don't paint the base, the base is facing the ground. So those are the kind of things we'll talk about this afternoon. I'll leave this as it is now, and hopefully all the answers are uh, correct here. And uh, uh, you send me any kind of comment you want on the emails, and I'll definitely get back to you.